Good morning <laughs> and welcome. Well, welcome back because I did go live at 10 o'clock, but there was something very suspicious about the um, what it was showing on my PC, which meant um, it didn't look like we were live, even though I felt we were live. So, um, welcome back. My name is Jenny McCormack. I'm an independent standing up demonstrator and I'm based in Brackley, market town of Brackley, which is in Northamptonshire in the UK. If you're joining for the first time, don't hesitate to say hi. Let us know that you're watching. And if you have any queries or questions um, or suggestions as we go along, then don't hesitate to comment and let me know. Ah, I've got some hearts. That's a great sign. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, earlier on it didn't show that anybody was watching and I couldn't see um, the little comments box on my screen so goodness knows what Facebook was doing so do say hi if you're watching me live now so today um, today we're using the peaceful cabin stamp set again so this is our third day in a row but I've decided today to match it with the cabin dies and this die set is designed um, to go obviously with the stamp set it can it has three pieces of scenery if you like that it can cut out from the stamped images so we have the three trees here so you can stamp those three trees out and then run it through the die cutting machine with this and it will create a scene with your trees cut out in profile the same thing with the cabin. You can stamp the cabin, all attaching themselves together, and then pop the die over the stamped image and cut that out. And then we also have the little fox in profile. So here's the little fox stamp. So you can stamp the fox and have the fox um, on, the, on the ridge, if you like. So we're gonna have a play with those and just build some easy um, cards with those scenes. In the set, you also have this cabin die. So this is designed to cut out um, the cabin and you can use it completely on its own. When you run it through the die cutting machine, you can run it through at the same time and I'll show you this and you get a cabin in relief. We also have the fence die that cuts out the stamped fence and then a separate fence die that cuts out a fence in its own right. We have some details for the three trees here. So you can add, this is like an emboss, it um, just cuts holes if you like in the trees. So you could use those. We also have three separate trees that it can cut out. And then we have some um, little snowflake, um, a little snowflake die that you would use just in the background. And then also a die that cuts out just the fox in its own right. So a really useful set of dies, obviously just really to work with the cabin, although obviously some of them, this set would work on its own. So let's get cracking. What I'm going to do is just stamp a few of the images and then um, just do some die cutting and then put a couple of cards together with the result. So I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but we always like a little bit of a challenge, don't we? So I'm just using some of our basic white card and I'm going to put it in um, landscape mode if you like with the the width across there so that we can die cut going across the page and it will just about cut the whole width which is perfect if you want to layer onto a base card so let's just do some stamping to get going and then some die cutting So I know there's people there, but there's no comments. It may just be that Facebook comments aren't working at the moment. 
so if you're commenting and nothing's coming up i do apologize <laughs> if you're not commenting then that's fine of course okay so i'm going to do the cabin what i'm going to do is stamp and then leave a gap between them let me just move that up a little bit so i've got a little bit more space hopefully you can see what we're doing oh joanne's here excellent joanne oh and she's on holiday this week perfect i'm glad you commented joanne because i was beginning to think it wasn't working again so i'm going to in cup this cabin and this one is in soft suede so i'm just making sure i've got all of that and i'm going to use the chimney if you like as my um to get this guideline straight hopefully and i know it needs to be fairly over to the left hand side okay oh it was jill's fault she jinxed it for being early <laughs> bless you jill so let me show you how this will go so when we die cut this out it will have the skyline if you like of the cabin in relief morning Kay so I am going to stamp another one I'm going to need plenty of space in between them so that I can vary the height of each of these go and I think I might do one in basic grey as well okay so I hope everybody is well this morning I'm just going to stamp over, um, over this one okay so this is basic grey got a little hair on there I can see it now there we go so I've got three little cabins let's add some trees and I'll also show you the cabin I cut out uh, with this one as well because it's really stunning um, let's have so succulent but I could oh maybe I'll do shaded spruce okay now this is going to cut out the trees like so if you wanted them further over what you could do is stamp the trees over here and then just extend the line out so I'll do that on one of them so you can see um, how you could vary the size of that So I'm just going to take the ink pad to that stamp. So thank you to everybody who's placed orders. It's good to see people taking advantage of the sale. Um, I've had a mix really, cardstock, dies, and um, ink pads my mind went completely blank then that was the postman and might be okay so there's my trees there so what I'm going to do is put them over here as well just to show you how that these will work I think you can have great fun with this set just stamping a whole series of um, these elements and then just putting them together Okay, so let's put one over there, like so. I haven't left much space there, but I think I'll be okay. Um, and let's have this tiny little fox over there. 
why not? Did you say you've got this set, um, Jill? The stamp set? I think you did. So the fox is um, over here on the left hand side. But again, you could position it anywhere. Okay, sorry if that was just off the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to die cut these out. So what I'm going to do is pop this one here on the trees like that, cut it out, do the same here and then the same with the cabins. Um, now to make life a bit easier to get it through the die cutting machine, I don't really want to put it through, um, well actually this one is okay to put it through that way, but ideally you want to be putting um, the smallest, the narrowest part towards your die cutting machine. But I think as this is sort of split like that, it'll be okay. Um, but what I might do is just cut that little bit off at the bottom. If I can find my scissors. Now I know that it's going to cut around here. Hopefully I've left enough space there. And I know that the fox is going to be the top of this one. Let's see. And the reason I put them at different heights is obviously you want, you know, some of them you want more snow underneath or, or whatever. Okay, so let's pop these through quickly. Hi Susan, how lovely to have you join us my darling. So with this one I'm going to put it on obviously further across and then just cut afterwards. I'm not going to cut before um, so I'm just going to line that up on there and if you wanted to you could use a little bit of masking tape. Um, the edges of this die are almost on the edge so you could be quite accurate with that um, placement she says so i hope everything's okay susan and that everybody in the family is feeling better okay just going to pop that through Yes, it's a bit tricky, Jill, isn't it, when you've got lots going on to know when you're going to get an opportunity to use them. So, can you see there? Okay, so all I'm going to do is just extend this cut here, like so. There we go. It's that, that set of trees going to do this set as well. I didn't put any tape on so it has moved very slightly. I've obviously put my tape somewhere so safe I can't find it but the good news is for those that were watching yesterday is I have actually found my glasses. <laughs> okay so I'm going to do the same with this one. So I should put my glasses on to see what I'm doing. Hi Vanessa, it's lovely isn't it, this bundle. I use the papers and everything for class, but I think the dies just take it to another level, to be honest, don't they? So bear with me while I'm just cutting these out. So there's some, whoops, a flying die. <laughs> there's some trees over on the left, so you could build up a, a real forest here, couldn't you? 
that die has gone flying right I've got that back now okay let's do the fox so I think I really will need a bit of tape for this one how come you can never find washi tape when you need it Right, let me put this down and do it on the flat, well, flat surface. I think my dies a little bit curvy, shall we say, at the moment. So what's everybody up to today, I wonder? Give this a go. There we go. There's the fox. If you can see that, it's very sweet. And then finally, I've cut out a couple of the cabins. So I'm going to use this one here and I will show you the combination of those um, of that cabin as well. I'm just going to cut this like so again just so I can put it through the die cutting machine at a kinder angle. So I'm going to pop it through in that direction like that. Sorting out the loft. Bless you. That's not the best exciting thing to be doing. Susan's prepping next week's class. So Susan is one of our demonstrators in um, Lancashire. And she runs classes from her home. So there we go, and it cuts out, I like the fact it cuts out this little section here. So it's that one. And I'll just cut these out, and then we've got bits that we can be using. And of course, you can combine this with the papers as well, if you want to, like we did yesterday. And it also cuts out, if you can see here, the, um, the back of these windows here, of that little porch area. So it's really um, very effective. Sorry, it's not very exciting while I'm die cutting. So we've got a couple of cabins there. And obviously you could put the cabin further over in the, exactly the same way. So here I've got the trees here on the right hand side. And you can have a cabin here on, obviously on the left. Okay, and the last one I want to show you is cutting out this um, piece here and these two cut out at the same time so I'm just going to grab another piece of white just luck to have it I have some here so if you don't have the stamp set you could use this element of the dies in their own right there we 
through. I'll just cut it and then show you so you can see it. And again, putting it through a bit of an angle to be kind to my die cut and boss machine. Oh, Vanessa's getting ready to go to bed. Bless you, Vanessa. If I lift this out, you can see here, if I put it on here, the cabin. Let's poke out those little bits. And then these nuts here. So that's where it cuts out. It's not designed to cut out the um, the stamped image at the same time as this because it, it doesn't coordinate with that. It's a slightly different layout. Okay, um, but that, that really does look stunning. Um, what we did for our classes was that I had a layer of smoky slate that I cut out behind it just with this piece here so that you could see that detail because you really do need something dark behind that um, to see it in more detail tiny little bit in there okay so let's see what we can do with these i can get myself close up to the desk so let's see what we have So we can, as I say, we can also cut out that little fence, which is really quite sweet. And there's the detail on the trees that I could have added, um, which put basically puts holes in the tree so that you can sort of lift up elements of it. And then we also have these trees that cut out in their own right, like so. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is move those out of the way. You watch me knock those over, everybody. And let's see what we've got. So basically, all you need to do now is just do a bit of um, playing with the scenes. So obviously I've got cabin here on the left and the trees on the right. So you can move this up or down. I like the fact you've got the hole there so that you can see through that porch. All you need to be aware of is having enough depth here because if this was really narrow and you put this um, on top, you'd obviously have a gap here. Okay, so I would say err on the side of caution and have a larger bit underneath um, than you actually may need. Here's a great example of that. So if I take this one here, just lay that down. I'm hoping you can see that. And if you then put the cabin on here, can you see? It's got a gap here, which wouldn't matter if you were on um, layering onto white card, because it would just look like a layer of the snow. Um, but just a recommendation to leave as big a gap there as you can okay and I've also got the fox so I could have the trees here the cabin and the fox really there's just so many combinations like so and then you could layer these up with dimensionals in between and the other thing you could do to make this quite effective would be to take a blending brush and just brush along the edges of this in either crumb cake or smoky slate just so that you see the edge so that could be one like that 
have a look and then I've got the trees here so I might I mean obviously you could cut these trees here and put them also on the right hand side or we could have those behind like that that would also work wouldn't it okay and then um, that one I'm going to use separately so I think that's going to be my approximate layout so let's um, do a little bit of blending brush on the edges just so you can see that as I said So I think I'm going to use, I think I've got a, a little bit of brown, this one here. I just want the edge, it's, um, Let's grab crumb cake or something. Don't want it too dark. Mm -hmm. I've got an old crumb cake here. So I'm just going to run this along this edge. So I think it's, it's difficult for you to see, but there's just that little edge along there now that you can see. And I am going to raise these up on dimensionals as well just add a little bit more okay there you go that's a little bit more obvious now hopefully you can see that do the same one here and then what I can use is some of the papers for the further background going to go like that. That would be one. And then this is my sort of triple set. You could easily have, if I show you here, so you can lose the cabin altogether, have a whole series of trees and have um, your fox up on the ridge. I'll just bring that up a little bit so you can see it so you could really you know really have some great fun with this so i'm going to put or you could have the fox there so that's going to be my um scene so i'm just going to add just a little bit of that on the edge with this one so the stamp set and dies um, that I'm using are in our July to December so our winter catalog for us here in the UK let's um, put some cards together so that's my three layers like so 
I just need to decide what I'm going to put behind and Carefully tidied away some of the papers. Let's have a look. So, you could have that behind for like um, a night scene. This one would also work. This is the one with the large trees on. Um, if I'd had grey trees, you could have this as the trees in the background. Um, that would also work. As would that. Just going to slide that behind and see. So you could have that as a complete sort of scene behind. Actually, that works really well, doesn't it? I'm going to do that for one of them. Um, what I might do is do that for the one where I've got the two layers. Like so. Build up that, that scene there. Okay, so let's cut this down so I'm going to pop this on let's have a look I'm going to do 10 by 14.35 like so And then this might just go straight onto my card. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about any of these untidy edges because I'm going to trim those off afterwards. And then the fox. Like that. Oops. So I have got this die did move a little bit, so I have got a little bit more white there than I would normally like, but I'm not um, going to worry about it. So I think that is going to be my layers. So I'm just going to bring those up to there. So I'm going to glue these down flat and then add the other layers with dimensionals sort of me mentally making a note of where that is <laughs> let's put a mark on my paper perfect so some green glue You could layer all of these three up with dimensionals if you wanted to. Okay, so I know I've got to cover that little bit up there. And obviously you could angle these as well, however you want those trees to be. Just lifting that because I've got a little join. Morning, Brenda. Okay, so that's my background scene. So we're carrying on with the stamps, but I've introduced the dies this time. And then our little fox here is going to go on the front like that. Might make him a little bit higher. So this is going to go on with dimensionals. Let's 
so you could definitely have some fun with these I'm not putting them right to the edge because I know I'm probably going to trim off a little bit of those edges and I'm not too worried about the bottom piece either. So let's just take these backings off. <laughs> oh, bless you, Brenda. Well, I have to say, the dies and the stamps are doing the hard work. I'm just putting them together. Okay, so I've got my um, cabin here. I do want to have it overlapping these trees because I just think that's really nice. Like so. There we go. And um, hi, Catherine. And then hopefully I've left enough space for my fox, which is going to go down there. And again, you could position that fox anywhere and just cut um, the rest. So the die cuts out the fox and this piece here. But um, as I did with these trees, just reposition the stamp on your paper. Hello, Tracy. So we're having a bit of, bit of fun using the stamps and the dies. So I think he's going to go on to there and I could add my Christmas sentiment across the bottom. I just want to see how much I'm likely to cut off. I quite like actually him being right in front of that cabin there. I am going to just do a little bit more of that edge. thought it to look too dirty <laughs> right let's get um let me see let's use soft succulent that's what i use for the trees oh no i didn't i use shaded spruce for the trees so i'm going to use that for my christmas message and i think i've got merry christmas still here this would make a nice uh, man's birthday card as we said before yesterday So I'm going to stamp this before I put it on. But you could do this without a sentiment if you wanted to. Oh, bless you, Catherine. Well, thanks for popping in and saying hi. Appreciate that. Okay, let's just see what that looks like before I stamp it on there. Yep, that's fine. Oh, and I'll tell you the other um, sentiment that would look really nice on there. Just before I do that. And that is heartfelt wishes. So this Merry Christmas would look lovely. I'm not sure if I've got enough space. Um, let me have a look and see. Yeah, it's a little bit big for my fox. But it might work on my other set, I'm not sure. But that would be really nice. So I like this. I do like the script of this. Sending love is nice as well. And you've got Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So that's called Heartfelt Wishes. But I'm going to stick to my guns. And um, I just want to check the positioning. really it's a bit too big a block for that purpose okay so this is going to go on there like that and I think what I'm going to do is just put dimensionals across the bottom so that it's not um, too high so what I'm going to do is put them in on that section there So this is where the edge is perfect for that. Just cut 
this down. Like so. And when you are doing a length of dimensionals, you don't want to anything, you want to break it up. You don't want anything too long for this purpose. Otherwise it can, if you, when you put your card down, if it's, if it doesn't relax on, it will, it'll pull the card and you can get a little bit of tension and then it doesn't sit very flat, which is why I've broken those up into smaller pieces rather than having one long strip. So one, two, three. Get my finger off. Okay. I'm going to take that off and take my glasses off so that, and I'm going to stand up so I can get this piece right on the bottom. see that oops and then I'm just going to trim these edges off there we go if you do them from the back you're less likely to cut it into the card I have got a dimension onto there as well there we are and that's then going to go on to a base card and the question is what car card should I put that on I'm quite tempted to put smoky slate behind it have a look so you don't want anything too dark I think that will work I mean the alternatively it's white but we've got quite a lot of white going on haven't we so I'm going to make it smoky slate I'm going to have it opening on the side I'm just going to score that at 14.85 if you don't want to do the 0.5 you can do 14.8 or 14.9 thank you Brenda for your message okay. right let's fold that And pop that onto there so it'll be my finished card I'm really pleased with that so I definitely the way I definitely think the way to go with these is just literally stamp two or three pages of tree if you need to do a lot of cards <laughs> two or three pages of trees two or three pages of cabin and vary the position of the trees and the cabin um, going across so you can have them in different um, places well done Brenda <laughs> Brenda's multitasking <laughs> okay and then let's do this one here and so for this one I'm going to use this stunning um, background this one if you wanted to make this go further the paper you could do this in portrait so you would get um, three cards Um, but I think I think I'm going to do mine in landscape so move this up so these trees become the backdrop that's the plan okay so let's 
cut this panel so what I'm going to do is cut the width of this first and um, yeah so I'm going to do 14.35 so I'll get two out of a sheet and then what I could do is place these on and then cut it down. Let's have a look. I do want to 3D it a little bit, so let's have a look and see. So this is where I cut this a little bit too close, but as I say, you can cover that up because you can have your other layer quite high up if you want to. So let's have a little bit of that showing, like so. I think that works, doesn't it? So what I might do is stick this layer down and then cut my panel to size. You could easily put this on with dimensionals if you wanted to because it's card rather than paper. I know this is the right width that I want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's that layer there. And then this cabin is going to go on top with a little bit of um, depth here. So what I'm going to do is cut that at the top so that tree is included. And then take it from there. Let's have a look and see. So there's the top and the bottom of this would be 10 so I reckon that will work let's just chop this piece off And then this is going to go on and I'll cut off the excess after, I think. Like so, so it's fairly close to the bottom. Like there. I think what I'm going to do is really want a pencil. It's a pencil. Is just draw a line here. Line here. So that's um, where I'm going to cut that. Only because I want this straight, and if I put it on dimensionals, it'll be harder to trim it straight. Whereas I can just trim those little edges. We'll see. There we go. Fingers crossed, I haven't taken too much off it. There we go. No, that definitely works, doesn't it? So these are going to go up on dimensionals. Which are here. And I'll pop this again onto a smoky slate base. 
Let's see which bit is going to be cut off. This right hand end will be cut off, yes. So I can put my dimensionals up to that edge. So sorry this has gone on a bit longer than planned, although I did start a bit late after my initial technical issues. So it's not quite as long. So there we are. Put plenty on there because I want it nice and you know lifted and protected I want it sort of bowing in the middle now I haven't got a sentiment for this I could stamp one and pop it on top I know I need to cut that little bit off the edge nicely done there we go and then trim that little bit there. Okay. And then that is going to go onto my smoky slate card. Oh, the um, DSP is Peaceful Christmas. It's really, really stunning. Okay. So that is going to go on to there like that. So it's got a little bit of a border. Okay. Yeah, peaceful Christmas, Susan. In obviously in the Christmas catalog. So it's white, smoky slate, basic grey, and silver. So just leaving a little bit of a border again all the way around. You could put this on a complete size card if you wanted to, just make it a little bit bigger. You could also have another layer if you wanted to, but I didn't feel it needed it. And also I didn't want to make this panel too small. So there we go. So I've got this one here with the fox and the scenery and then this one here. So as I say, you could put a Christmas cross there, but actually I think it, it's absolutely fine as it is. Oh, bless you, Brenta. <laughs> I really appreciate that. I, I just know that sometimes it's, you know, people don't want to watch a whole long uh, diatribe of crafting. I think as long as I'm sticking fairly to the point, we're okay. Um, and then we have this one here that you could put a panel behind um, and in fact we did that for our class and if I could see the class cards I could show you but um, they are hidden, hidden out of the way. So maybe I'll use that um, and do something with those tomorrow. Um, because what we did was we put some yellow behind here to make it look like lights and it was like um, a night scene. So let's do that um, tomorrow evening. So that is today's cards using the Peaceful Cabin stamp set and the cabin dies that coordinate with it. I'll just lift those up so you can see them. That was our first one. Oops. And it's got the fox detail here. I don't know if you can see that or not maybe not in this and then this one here so just using those papers as a backdrop like so and then the ones we did yesterday for anybody who didn't see again this is using the papers but stamping onto the papers to create a scene so we've got the deer from the peaceful deer and there's a variation of that. Of course I will, Brenda. And then you've got the plain stamped scene. So this one is really easy. Literally one, two, three, four, five stamps. Actually, there's another one in there, the fence. You can miss that one out. 
five sets of stamp five stamps and you're away okay and then that's the same thing but just um using a little bit of color um right I'm, i need to find my catalog bear with me one second and i can just confirm the pricing for you ladies I just had to grab a fresh one from the other room. So it is in the I'll find it in a minute. <laughs> the Christmas catalog. Here it is. So the cabin dies are £34, the bundle together with your 10% saving is 49 50 and the stamp set can be found on 38 so if you wanted the stamp set on its own, still for some stunning cards, the stamp set itself is 21 and you can see they've done um, some other layers and things with this. Um, and you can see also where they've cut out, if you look, if you've got a catalogue, where they've cut out the holes in the trees, if you wanted it even more 3D. So 21 for the stamps, 49.50 for the bundle. Okay, so thank you everybody for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed the creative process that made these two cards. We'll be back again tomorrow, Thursday at 7 p.m uk time i hope you enjoy the rest of your day don't work too hard and uh, just take care look after yourselves look after your loved ones keep crafting and don't forget we have a sale on for cardstock inks and dies from the annual catalog so if you need any more information of that just scroll back through this facebook page and you'll find links to all of the sale items that sale finishes tomorrow evening, um, technically 10.50. I tend to say don't leave any later than half past nine, just in case. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Do take care now. <laughs> Bye for now.